Science Lab with Ray. Hey Ray, how you doing? Good, Marsh, how are you? What is this? We're looking at everything when it relates to human comfort, uh, whether we're looking at benchtop testing, our ring tower, or our mental chamber. And so why is that important you know, for a Gore-Tex product? Well, we're trying to establish ourselves as the best performing product on the market versus yeah. um, our competitors as well as our past comp our past product as well. I see. Right? Always innovating new technologies to try to make the consumer experience as pleasant as possible. Because uh, your body doesn't know when it's comfortable, it only knows when it's uncomfortable. Uh -huh. So if we can make you forget about your garment that you're wearing, we're doing our job. All right, well, let's take a look around some of these facilities that we have here. Sounds mind. good. We are in the environment chamber, otherwise known as the comfort chamber. And Ray, what do you study in here? So any of our products that are in the R&D funnel, we're going to be looking at in their fitness for use type conditions inside this chamber, whether it's on our hot plates, our sweating articulated mannequins, or human subjects that we're testing. The real goal of this chamber is to simulate the end use application. So making sure we have the temperature, the humidity, the solar, and the wind um, simulated to end use as realistically as possible inside this room. So you could make it like you're in Antarctica, so we could understand how this technology would work in Antarctica. Yep, roughly 95, 98% of the world's ambient conditions when it comes to temperature and humidity, we can simulate inside this room. So anywhere from minus 58F to 122F, from 5 to 95% RH, uh, up to about 20 miles an hour of airflow, and then we can do uh, the radiant load of the sun inside this room as well. Right, such a cool sort of group. I, mean, I think within that, you can really understand how somebody's going to be comfortable in the outdoors or maybe more important that they're going to be where they're going to pass into discomfort yeah so the comfort aspect making sure that the human subjects are perceiving differences between the technologies that we're testing mm -hmm. uh, there's also the performance metrics right to make sure that we're not pushing into safety issues when yeah. it comes to cold or hot injuries as well interesting right and i see that there's treadmills in here i've heard you brought in hunting environments in here, all sorts of things. Yeah, so that. anywhere from sleeping bags, to footwear, to the traditional Gore-Tex garments, the military applications. Uh, we try to make it as realistic to the end use as we can. We use the treadmills as workload generators, so um, we're eliminating that variable between subject to subject, so we're putting out the same amount of metabolic rate. So yep. um, you're gonna have to walk a little bit faster on the treadmill than I would since I'm a little bit larger than you are. So to put out that same amount of energy, we have to need to make sure that we're accounting for that when we're looking at the performance metrics that we have. So many variables to control for, right? Yes. You have to know them all. Too many. That's yes. why there's no such thing as a comfort field trial, only a durability field trial. Right. So that here you can isolate the variables and then yes. actually understand that. Yep. So one of the things I didn't hear you talk about was rain. Correct. So where do you study that? So for accurate rain testing, you need to make sure the raindrops are reaching terminal velocity and the ceiling height's a little low in here. So that's why we have the rain tower just down the hallway. Can you take a look? Absolutely. All right, let's go. Sure.